I can be a Jedi, you can be a Jedi, anybody can be a Jedi. Well, at least now, according to episode 3 of the Ahsoka series, anybody can be a Jedi. Because you see, Sabine Wren here, who in Rebels did not have any Force ability whatsoever, she was just skilled in combat because she is a Mandalorian, well, apparently now she is learning how to use the Force. Because of course, of course, of course, Sabine Wren is going to be a Jedi. She is going to have Force abilities. She's probably going to be stronger than Ezra Bridger, let's face it. More powerful than Shin, right? The character that we all fell in love with in the first two episodes. Good old Sabine over here is the new Rey, pretty much. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense that anybody can use the Force now. Because if you really think about it, if that were the case, how come the Emperor went out of his way to try and kidnap all those younglings because they were Force-sensitive? How come he just didn't train people how to use the dark side of the Force? It makes absolutely no sense. No sense whatsoever. But we know what they're doing here. We know what time it is. This has Kathleen Kennedy's stench all over it because what I believe happened, I believe that Ahsoka Tano is going to take a back seat in her own show just like Kenobi did in his show all to make room for a new boss, right? In the Kenobi series, it was Reva. In the Ahsoka series, it is Sabine. She is going to be the most powerful Force user in, in all of Star Wars, at least until Rey shows up. Who knows? Maybe Sabine is Rey's mom. I mean, who knows? Who cares? Because this makes absolutely no sense. How the hell is it that we are going to undo what was already canon? That yes, the Force is in everyone, sure, but only those with a high Menachlorian blood count can manipulate the Force in a way that grants them the abilities of the Sith or the Jedi or Force users, really. I mean, I want to know, really. I think we need to do a, a, one of those blood tests that uh, Qui-Gon Jinn did on Anakin on good old Sabine here. Maybe maybe her midichlorian count is higher than Yoda's. Who knows? Who cares? It really doesn't matter. Because again, at the end of the day, Ahsoka series doesn't matter. None of it matters because it's all going to end in the sequels. But yes, that is the biggest takeaway I have from episode 3 of Ahsoka. Is that apparently anyone, if they try hard enough, they can be a Force user. At least according to Ahsoka, according to Star Wars now. It, it is complete garbage. And, 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 and now that I am kind of going into spoiler territory, let's talk about the tentacle headdress that Ahsoka Tano had. That thing was ridiculous. Can we pull it up? Look at this thing, dude. <laughs> Who is the costume designer for this trash right here? Seriously, look at this design. Does this look practical to you? Like, how long did it take her to stuff her tentacle? <laughs> how long? How long did it take? Listen. This was the most ridiculous thing of episode three of the Ahsoka series by far. Probably one of the most ridiculous things in all of Star Wars. Look at this space helmet for Ahsoka. Look at how ridiculous this thing looks. I mean, think about it. How hard was it for her to stuff that tentacle in the back? <laughs> Look at this garbage. Who? Dude, I swear to God, if, if, if they get... If they get, like, an Oscar or a Golden Globe nomination for costume design for the Ahsoka series, it's fucking rigged. This is ridiculous. Look at this thing. Seriously, look at this thing. In comparison, here is the helmet she had in Clone Wars, right? This this makes more sense. Like, a, like, like you know, something that goes over it completely. Not this garbage. Oh, and it has little pointy ears. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, she got this shit tailor-made. It is something else. Overall, listen, episode three of the Ahsoka series was not bad. You know, it was silly. It was a silly episode. It was a silly episode where really nothing happened. I mean, you know, it, it, nothing. Nothing happened. You can skip episode three. 
for sure. If you have not seen it already and you're like, should I waste my time watching it? Don't waste your time watching it. Wait for episode four. I believe episode four is going to be better. It's going to be good. But I just want to point something out about uh, the Ahsoka series episode three. Okay. I think that Sabine, Sabine Wren is your new Ray. 100%. Listen, Sabine Wren is your new Ray. 100%. Not only is she going to be probably the best duelist with a lightsaber, and they're going to be like, oh, well, she's a Mandalorian. Not only that, but also she is going to learn how to use the Force because apparently anybody can use the Force now, right? Anybody can. You can. I can. I mean, shit. I used that shit the other day. I didn't even know. I, like, opened the door. Turns out I was using the Force. Who knew? Anyway, I digress. Sabine Wren is going to be the most powerful Force user in all of Star Wars, 100%. And, and you know, we, we all know why. We all know why they're doing this. We know why. But anyway, instead of, I don't know, like focusing on another character from Rebels who actually has a parent that probably has a high Menachlorian count that could potentially become a Jedi, someone that could potentially be a powerful Jedi. Someone who in the show said that he wanted to be a Jedi. Instead of training him, right? Instead of training him, and, and that would be fun to watch. A little kid, you know, maybe he's like 10 years old, training to be a Jedi from Ahsoka Tano. Instead of seeing that, we're going to get good old Sabine over here, who is easily becoming probably... One of the most annoying characters in Ahsoka. I mean, am I am I wrong in saying that? Isn't she like like she's kind of annoying now, isn't she? Like anyway, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments. And like always, don't forget to subscribe. Sensational.